Praise Yahweh, the King. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to start off by reading from 1 Kings. This is actually literally where I was today in my Bible reading, my personal time with the Lord. Let's get right into it. We're going to be talking about Solomon, the prophet Enoch, and how to get wisdom and knowledge. Let's go to 1 Kings chapter 3. 1 Kings 3, 5 through 9. In Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream at night, and God said, Ask what you wish me to give you. Then Solomon said, You have shown great love and kindness to your servant David, my father, according as he walked before you in truth and righteousness and uprightness of heart toward you, and you have reserved for him this great loving kindness that you have given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day. Now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David, yet I am but a, ch- yet I am but a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in. Your servant is in the midst of your people which you have chosen, a great people who are too many to be numbered or counted. So give your servant an understanding heart to judge your people, to discern between good and evil, for who is able to judge this great people of yours? (laughs) First Kings 4, 29, moving down. Now God gave Solomon wisdom and very great discernment and breadth of mind. And breadth of mind, like the sand that is on the seashore. Solomon's wisdom surpassed the wisdom of all the sons of the east and all the wisdom of Egypt, for he was wiser than all men, than Ethan, the Ezraite, Heman, Kalkal, and Darda, the sons of Mahol. And his fame was known in all the surrounding nations. He also spoke 3,000 proverbs, and his songs were 1,005. He spoke of trees from the cedar that is in Lebanon, even to the hyssop that grows on the wall. He spoke also of animals and birds and creeping things and fish. Men came from all peoples to hear the wisdom of Solomon, from all the kings of the earth who had heard of his wisdom. I just got to, I got to say it. Okay, going back to 1 Kings 3. So give your servant an understanding heart to judge your people, to discern between good and evil, for who is able to judge this great people of yours? That is 1 Kings 3, 9. When Solomon asked God for a discerning heart and understanding to judge the people of God, God, Jesus, didn't say, Solomon, judge not. Verse 4 says how God gave him all that so that he could judge his people. I just had to say that for all the, you know, since I do street ministry, street preaching, I always get, you know, the judge not and from Matthew 7, 1, but they don't even read the full verse. There's a good judgment. There's a bad judgment. You need to read the book of Judges. What were they doing there? They were judging people just like how Solomon is judging people here. He asked for discernment. That's why God gives us discernment so we can judge things rightly. Goodness gracious. Just had to tap on that subject for a moment for all the gummy bear or maybe, you know, more newborn or people that are ignorant in that area. Anyways, yes, let's move on to the subject. Let's move on to what we're going to be talking about today. How to get wisdom and knowledge. And we're going to look at two people. We've already been looking at Solomon. Now we're going to be looking at Enoch as well. But let's, let's start off with this. 
Proverbs 1, 7 through 9. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. Hear, my son, your father's instruction, and do not forsake your mother's teaching. Indeed, they are a graceful wreath to your head and ornaments about your neck. Notice Proverbs 1, 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Okay. Uh, the fear of the Lord, it just means to respect God. No, it means to literally be afraid of God, what he can do to you if you rebel against him. This is why Jesus says, don't fear man, but fear God who can destroy body and soul and cast it into hell fire. <laughs> it's just amazing. The Bible says to serve the Lord. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. It doesn't say work out your salvation with respect. It doesn't say just, oh, just respect God and just serve him because you love him. <laughs> No, the Bible says to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. 2 Corinthians 5.11 says, Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. It doesn't say knowing therefore the love of God. <laughs> Amen. Knowing therefore the goodness of God. Uh... Knowing, therefore, the goodness of God, yes. But it's all a part of the goodness of God, man. you got to take the full accounts of God. It's all a part of God's goodness. Because if there wasn't one side, then it would make void the other. Anyways. Second part of Proverbs 1-7. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. That's why, you know, don't cast your pearls before swine. Yes, Mark, what is it? 16-15? Uh, go out into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Okay. Preaching repentance, the gospel, isn't necessarily throwing your pearls before swine. There is deeper knowledge and wisdom from the Lord. Meat, not milk. There is milk and then there is meat. Meat for the mature. Yes, if someone's a sinner, they're not going to understand, you know, like, the rapture, the, the 12 tribes of Israel, the revelation and that. They're not going to, what? Wait, what are you doing talking about that? I mean, unless the Lord tells you specifically, but generally speaking... If someone is lost, you're going to be telling them the milk. The milk. Paul talks about how some people are still in need of milk to be told out of, about baptism and turning from dead works. Some people still need the basic stuff. Uh, but... Anyways. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. Another way we could go about this is when you're preaching to the lost... When you're lifting up your voice, out there rebuking the wicked, fools despise wisdom and instruction. They don't want to be told instruction, how to, how to please God. They want, they just want to do things their way. They're slaves of sin. They're slaves to, the, to their flesh. God just hasn't opened their eyes. And until God opens up their eyes, unless God opens up their eyes, the gospel is foolishness to them. Anyways, how to get the fear of the Lord. We read in 1 Kings 3, 1 Kings 4, that Solomon received perfect wisdom and knowledge, understanding, discernment from the Lord because he asked that that is what God would give him. We're going to read Proverbs 2, 
3 through 9. For if you cry for discernment, lift your voice for understanding. If you seek her as silver and search for her as for hidden treasures, then you will discern the fear of the Lord and discover the knowledge of God. Verses Proverbs 2, 3 and 2, 4 says, For if you cry for discernment, cry, ask God, lift your voice for understanding. Jesus, give me understanding. Give me discernment. You have not because you ask not. Let's go back to verse 5, moving down. Then you will discern the fear of the Lord and discover the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom. For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk in integrity, guarding the paths of justice, and he preserves the way of his godly ones. Then you will discern righteousness and justice and equity in every good course. So it's saying, you know, he gives wisdom to the upright. Yeah, you need... <laughs> you need to start... By repenting, if you're not born again, you can only receive wisdom from God. And right here, this passage is saying he gives sound wisdom to the upright, to the righteous. Okay? You need Jesus Christ. You've sinned against God. Okay? And you're in danger of hellfire if you're still a sinner. If you're not born again, you need to cry out to God, Jesus I believe in the gospel that you died and rose again for my sins, that if I repent and believe in you, Jesus, you'll give me a new heart, new understanding, new wisdom and knowledge, understanding, revelation, deeper revelation, Father, give it. Cry out to God. James 1.5, King James Version, let's read it. If any of you lack wisdom, so this is actually talking to Christians. James is actually written to Christians. If any of you lack wisdom, okay, so Christians can lack wisdom. Yes, they could have a surface wisdom, but there's deeper, deeper revelation. That's why there's this, there, you know that there is a spirit called the spirit of revelation. I think it's in Ephesians, somewhere in the New Testament. The spirit of revelation and knowledge. Anyways, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. They giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. God is not going to upbraid you for asking for wisdom. You know, unless you're asking for some sort of wicked wisdom or doing it for your own glory. But if you have a heart that's right with the Lord, as for wisdom, as for more wisdom. That's what James 1, 5 and Proverbs chapter 2, 3 through 9 is saying. Cry for discernment. Lift up your voice for understanding. Proverbs 2, 3. James 1, 5. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. 1 Kings 3. We, are, we, uh, we read the passage already. But, uh... Solomon, the Lord asked Solomon, ask of me and I shall give it to, to thee. I'm paraphrasing, but Solomon replied by asking God for wisdom and discernment so that he could judge rightly. He could judge between good and evil. He could judge the people of God. And man, you bet he got it. The Bible says that God told Solomon that there would be no man before him or after him that is like unto him in wisdom and knowledge. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We're gonna go on to uh, we're gonna go on to talking about Enoch. Now we're gonna get into the book of Jasher. So if something doesn't contradict the Bible. 
And especially, not only does it not contradict it, but the Bible mentions it by name and or references it and or quotes it verbatim. I will take that and I will use it. And, you know, okay, Jasher quoted in, quoted by name in the Old Testament like twice. One time in 2 Samuel, I believe, and the first time it appears by name is Joshua 10.13. And when it's talking about how the book of Joshua talked about how the, the sun stopped moving in Joshua 10.13. Is it not written in the book of Jasher? Anyways, this book is mentioned by name in the Bible. It talks about Enoch. It expands on Enoch, whom we see in Genesis. The seventh from Adam. Anyways, very important prophet of the Lord. Jasher 3, 8 through 12. Just sit and listen, relax. Jasher 3, 8 through 12. And the Spirit of God was on Enoch. And he taught all his men the wisdom of God and his ways. And the sons of men served the Lord all the days of Enoch. And they came to hear his wisdom. And all the kings of the sons of men, both first and last, together with their princes and judges, came to Enoch when they heard of his wisdom. And they bowed down to him. And they also required of Enoch to reign over them. To which he consented, and they assembled one hundred and thirty kings and princes in all. And they made Enoch king over them, and they were all under his power and command. And Enoch taught them wisdom, knowledge, and the ways of the Lord. And he made peace among them, and peace was throughout the earth during the life of Enoch. And Enoch reigned over the sons of men two hundred and forty-three years, and he did justice and righteousness with all his people. And he led them in the ways of the Lord. Enoch! Jasher explicitly talks about how Enoch was a man full of wisdom and knowledge and understanding from the Most High. He was so respected. He Well, he had so much favor from God and man in those regards of his wisdom and knowledge and understanding from the Lord that they wanted to make him king. They made him king. This is why the fallen angels in 1 Enoch in Genesis 6-4 First Enoch elaborates on the situation, but the first Enoch talks about the fallen angels who slept with the daughters of the sons of men, how they actually sought Enoch to petition God for them on their behalf because God wasn't up for listening to these fallen angels. These 200 or so fallen angels had come down, slept with the daughters, daughters of the sons of men, and they actually sought out Enoch why did they seek Enoch? He was a king. He was uh, someone hold of great... People had a great reverence for him. A great respect for him. That's why these fallen angels saw Enoch. He wasn't just some, you know, just... Just some anybody. Very important, very important key player. Jasher 3, 17 through 20. We're going to read this passage that shows up a little bit. We had just read Jasher 3, 8 through 12. Now we're moving to Jasher 3, 17 through 20. Go and read the book of Jasher for yourself if you want to check out everything. But Jasher 3, 17 through 20. And it was in the year of Adam's death, which was the 243rd year, Hold up, hold up, are we? All right, we are still good to go. Jasher 3, 17 through 20. And it was in the year of Adam's death, which was the 243rd year of the reign of Enoch. In that time, Enoch resolved to separate himself from the sons of men and to hide himself as at first in order to serve the Lord. Okay. You start seeing here, Enoch was separating himself from the Lord, from the sons of men to spend personal time with the Lord. Okay, verse 18. And Enoch did so, but did not entirely hide himself from them, but kept away. This is the main focus of this part, reading this passage. But kept away from the sons of men three days. I just love this, man. But kept away from the sons of men three days, and when they... 
but kept away from the sons of men three days and then went to them for one day. This is what Enoch was doing. He recognized he had to spend personal time with the Lord. Okay? Okay? See, when you go out preaching, go out preaching multiple days in a row. Two. Even just two days in a row. It could be a lot. I mean, yes, there's times when you rest, you're going out preaching multiple days in a row, but sometimes it's like, man, you need to have that personal time with the Lord, okay? You know what I mean? But kept away from the sons of men three days, and then went to them for one day. And during the three days that he was in his chamber, he prayed to and praised the Lord his God. And the day in which he went and appeared to his subjects, he taught them the ways of the Lord, and all they asked him about the Lord he told them. And he did this, and he did in this manner for many years, and afterward he concealed himself for six days, and appeared to his people one day in seven. So, at first, okay, first, Enoch was doing one day with men, three days with the Lord. He would do that rotation, one day teaching the men, three days spending personal quality time with the king. And now in verse 20, Enoch is taking it to the next level, six days with the Lord, and one day teaching, discipling men. Let's go back to verse, let's go back to 19 and just finish this passage. And during the three days that he was in his chamber, he prayed to and praised the Lord, his God. Not only is there praying, but there is praising the Lord. Those can be two separate things. Yes, it can be the same also, but those can be two separate things. You've been praying a lot, but have you been praising the Lord, giving him thanks, singing to the Lord? Okay, going back to verse 19. And during the three days that he was in his chamber, he prayed to and praised the Lord as God. And the day on which he went and appeared to his subjects, he taught them the ways of the Lord. And all they asked him about the Lord, he told them, he told them, and he did this and he did in this manner for many years. And afterward, he concealed himself for six days and appeared to his people one day in seven. And after that, once in a month. <laughs> he went... <laughs> okay, we're just going to keep on reading. And after that, once in a month. And then once in a year, until all the kings, princes, and sons of men sought for him and desired to see the face of Enoch again and to hear his word but they could not, as all the sons of men were greatly afraid of Enoch, and they feared to approach him on account of the godlike awe that he that was seated on his countenance. Therefore no man could look at him, fearing he might be punished and die. Man, just crazy New Testament parallels here. First off, I just gotta say, this man... The prophet, the seventh from Adam, Noah's grandfather. This is what he would do. Three days with the Lord, personal time, one day with men. Then he brought it to the next level. Six days with the Lord, one day with men. Then he brought it to the next level. <laughs> All the days in the month with the Lord, except for one day, was he spent. Spending time with men. The rest of the days of the month, he was with the Lord, praising and praying to him, seeking his wisdom. And his countenance is perfect. Just, man. Then he brought it to the next level. One day out of the whole year is the only time he went out to see and teach men the wisdom of God. Genesis, what is it? Genesis 5 says that Enoch walked with God and was not. Enoch walked with God <laughs> and was not.
And so all the kings, princes, and sons of men sought for him. People are seeking him, just like how people are seeking Jesus. Enoch had the Spirit of Christ, no doubt about it. The New Testament, 1 Peter, 2 Peter, one of those, maybe both, it talks about how the prophets, the prophets uphold, they, the Spirit of Christ worked through them. And I also believe... Enoch was a Melchizedekian priest, just like, oop, just like, just like uh, Jesus Christ, who is obviously the Melchizedekian priest. He's the high priest. But, uh, anyways, this was before the Levitical. So, Melchizedekian priest. That is a king, priest, a prophet. If anyone's a Christian, they're not under the Levitical. There's so much we can get into here. They're not under the Levitical law. They're under the law of Christ. And they're under the order of Melchizedek, just like Jesus Christ. Because we are a part of Jesus' body. Hallelujah. This passage in Joshua talks about the godlike awe that was upon Enoch. It just reminds me of Stephen. Stephen. However you pronounce his name. Stephen, when he was stoned and he had the face shining as an angel. And didn't Paul also have that when he was standing before the court? Also in the book of Acts, of course. And he had a face that shown like an angel or was that just Stephen? anyways either way it literally sounds like how jesus enoch had to like hide himself these people wanted to hear this guy's wisdom the people wanted to hear jesus christ a lot of people at least of course there's you know the people that wanted to kill him but anyways Jesus had to go away for a time to spend quality time with the Father. Enoch went away for a time to spend quality time with God. Man, I'm telling you what, man. We are in the days of Enoch. This is why the book of Enoch is making a reassurance. Oh, if the, if, uh, if the book of Enoch is inspired or part of God's word, then why? It never went away. God was just... It was in the caves of Qumran. And or it was people had it, they just weren't talking about it because there's people that suppress it. There's a reason why the f- book of First Enoch what is making a resurgence because we are in the days of Noah slash the days of Enoch. And Enoch is literally a picture of the church. Just like how Enoch was raptured, the church is going to be raptured because they please God. The church are those who please God and are friend of God. Just like how it says that Abraham was a friend of God. The church is the seed of Abraham. The true Israel are those, not all Israel are of Israel. Those who please God are the true Israel, the sons and daughters of God who walk according to the Spirit. Anyways, Isaiah 11, 2. I always pray this, constantly pray this. You know, I brought up the spirit of revelation, the spirit of knowledge earlier. This is the seven spirits of God listed in Isaiah 11, 2. Revelation talks about the seven spirits of God, but I don't think in that book that actually says what those seven spirits are. Isaiah 11, 2 gives us their names. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him talking about Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and strength, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. Lord, bind those seven spirits to me, align me with the seven spirits, and give me the spirit of revelation, and give me an excellent spirit. Oh, there's just the Holy Spirit. No, there's other spirits. There's wicked spirits, and then there's the seven spirits of God, the spirit of the Lord will rest on him. 
One spirit. The spirit of wisdom. Two. The spirit of understanding. Three. The spirit of counsel. Four. The spirit of strength. Five. The spirit of knowledge. Six. The, the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Seven. Then there's also the spirit of uh, revelation. Anyways. Hallelujah. I have been planning on doing that video for a bit. Here we go. Thank you.